Spirit does, when you read the self versus self concept section in the back of the Course, it's saying that the Holy Spirit's role is exchanging the concepts. So when you make a self concept to take the place of your Christ identity, that is a substitution of enormous magnitude to believe that you can be a body instead of spirit, pure spirit. That, that's the ego, that's the first substitution of illusions for reality. And then this, some of you have maybe have seen the movie Inception, where there's all these levels. There's so many levels, seemingly, metaphorically, of dreaming that you keep going down, 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 descending into your mind being focused on time and space that you forget that you're dreaming. You completely take on the role and take on everything about the role. Very much like when you go to a movie theater and you're watching a movie, you don't just sit in there in the seat going, well, I paid, you know, ten pounds here and I'm going to watch this movie and it's a movie, it's a movie, it's a movie, it's a movie. You don't maintain that it's a movie mentality. Um, you could, but for most people they don't. They actually get caught up into all of the roles and the drama and the emotion and then they come out and they've had an emotional experience. Sometimes even more emotional than in their own families. It's quite intense, these movies they come up with now. Yeah. Uh, but actually that's the same dynamic that happens <coughs> when the mind has an amnesia, forgets the light, forgets the love, and gets caught in these layers and layers of, of scenarios and outcomes and forgets that it's just dreaming the whole thing. It just gets way out there on the screen, so to speak. So, the Holy Spirit will exchange concepts, and that's what I was talking about this morning, where you have this feeling like you're more than what you seem to be. It's just like, but there's some kind of a ceiling blocking you from accessing this higher experience. But through workbook lessons, through meditation, through your spiritual practice, you actually get access past the glass ceiling, past the, the limitations that have been placed on the mind to these vast states of consciousness, and so that, what Jenny was giving you was the story from the perspective of the mother and the, the son and so forth, and packed into those years there was lots of willingness to follow the Holy Spirit, you know, mind training, traveling, taking on all kinds of assignments from the Holy Spirit that would bless the whole universe. You have to keep in mind the context is what is the greatest good for all. That's how the Holy Spirit operates. We call that holiness, holy relationship, what serves the whole. And specialness is what serves the ego by maintaining the construct. It doesn't want too many shifts and changes in the construct because the ego is saying your worth, which is small, but your small worth is, is tied into these little constellations that have been made and focused on by the ego. And really, no two people see the same world. There's just that there's common elements, like I've talked about, and I'll, you'll see that in the mini-movie tonight. I'll talk about the concept that no two people see the same world. It's all variable perception, and that's why there's so much arguing, disagreements, um, wars, conflict, because it's, it seems like there's seven billion egos, and each ego is seeing the world from a different perspective, and there's no universal agreement in this. Really, it's just one ego that has projected out seven billion bodies with seven billion private minds with seven billion sets of private thoughts. And no wonder it's the ego's world, because the ego is behind all of it. It made up all the relationships, it made up all the bodies, it made up all the ego ideals. It's, it's thicker, it's deeper than you could even imagine or have a hint of. You know, and sometimes when people say, I'm afraid of, you know, from the old Christian perspective, I'm afraid that I'll, I'll be sent to hell and I'll burn in hell, the old hellfire concept. Um, and I said, well, this perceptual distorted world is hell. You know, you're, you're dealing with it on a daily basis. You don't have to worry about burning in the fire. <laughs> this is it. It doesn't get any that's getting any worse or better than how you perceive right now because there isn't an afterlife actually and there isn't a, a hell 
where you burn, there those are just more ego concepts to keep you good and scared. You know that there could be some kind of consequence of burning in hell or something like that. For most of us, you know, we we get to the point where we think that's ridiculous. You know, but still we deal with daily guilt, daily feelings of fear and heaviness where we don't feel joyful. You know, that's that's hell. In fact. Jesus says that any feeling that you experience that is not supremely happy <clears throat> is what death is. Death is not when the biology of the body seems to shut down and you don't have any brain activity and pulse or heartbeat or anything. That the ego even invented its own form of death. You know, and it's it's widely believed. You know, when you say somebody died, you're not saying that uh, they have some form of upset going on, you know. You know, uh, how's your dad? Well, he's dead. He has a sore fingernail. He's dead. But Jesus' definition, if you've got a sore fingernail, you're dead. Pain is a witness to death. And any feeling that you experience, even agitation, irritation, annoyance, a little Faint annoyance is death. Jesus has a psychological definition for death. Any feeling, any experience that you have that is not supremely happy is death. If you want to go check it out some more, check out Lessons 163 and 167 in the Course. He'll give you his death dissertations. It's quite profound. So, what we see though is that there's these we're given assignments, we're given opportunities to shine our light for the good of the whole universe, to awaken the one mind up, because there's only one mind sleeping, not seven billion, just one that has to get it. Jesus even says, when I awoke you were with me, and people say, oh, I wish I could experience that, <laughs> but he's giving a hint that there's just one mind and you, you're either awake in the experience of heaven, or you believe that you're separate from God. And the only middle ground is what we could call a happy dream, where you're still dreaming, but you know that you're the dreamer of the dream. And that's where, that's the alternative to what Jenny's been talking about. The dreamer of the dream.